Now I'm getting ready to do some Mishima, that's Japanese for inlay, it's inlay technique, where rather than just painting lines onto the surface of a pot, you are actually having those lines embedded in the surface of your piece. So you may see online a number of different ways of doing inlay in ceramics. Some people will carve into the clay, paint the slip, underglaze, or ungobe onto that surface and then wipe the excess off with a sponge. That only works with porcelain. What we need to do is do our carving, paint our underglaze on, and allow it to dry completely in the lines, and then use our metal rib to scrape off the surface. And I recommend doing a test. Here's a test that I did. Some really nice, fun quality to those lines. And the key is to carve in nice and deep. Make sure you get down at least like a millimeter when you do that carving and allow it to dry completely and then scrape it off real carefully. It looks nice if you use a variety of line qualities, thick, thin. You can have some totally dark areas. You can even paint in some areas dark after the fact. Uh, but definitely do a test, get a slab that you have left over. The best stage to do it at is dry leather hard, so leather hard but on the drier side. Just try out some different kinds of lines and then let it dry, scrape it off, see how it goes. And then once you're feeling confident, then you can go ahead and do that on your base. You will want to plan out your design. You could freestyle it a little bit, but it's nice to have an idea of what you want to do. For me, I like the format of Chinese vases where some of them will have sort of like a frame and then an image in the middle. And I was going to play around with that idea and do one of my son. There will be him in the middle and then things that he's kind of interested in and obsessed with like spoons and chickens and the moon. He's two years old tomatoes we have a garden he eats lots of tomatoes so he, i was gonna make him as a tomato plus his head is kind of shaped like a tomato anyway so what i did is i printed out some images of him of his head different sizes so i can cut these out and then i can place them on there and see which one is the right size for my composition and then i can actually trace that onto the clay and use those as templates so you can actually get imagery lay it onto the surface of your clay and trace it so I'll show you how to do that I've laid my vase down and because the lip of the vase actually sticks out more than the edge of the vase I needed to kind of elevate it and then hang it off the edge you'll want to make sure that your design goes all the way around and it should really work with the shape of your vase. It should enhance the shape and respond to that shape. It shouldn't fight the shape. So think about how you can really incorporate your design into the form. I chose the biggest image. So I think this is going to be the front side. On the back side I'll just kind of do some patterning and make sure it's kind of lined up in the middle. And what's nice is that this is round. His head is very round. And then I'll just kind of measure and make sure it's in the middle. Or I could put it off center, but if I put it off center, it should look very intentionally off center. Now I'll trace it. And I'm going to use this needle tool. One good way to do it is like with little dots. You can also push, push in like that. I feel like the dots are easier to see pushing into the clay. And you're going to destroy the paper image. I think that's good. Let's peel it up and see. There it is. So I have a variety of tools here to work with. I have a needle tool. I have this ball tool, two different size balls, dull pencil, 
have this little like hook tool, the B3 cleanup tool with the two ends on it. So really a variety of tools. A pen, like a ballpoint pen can work well. Just gonna carve in nice and deep here. I'll just start with the needle tool with real thin lines. And don't worry about the little tidbits that are gonna come up, the little crumbs on there. Wait till the end and then flick them off with a brush. The lines that the needle tool will make are really, they're not like the prettiest lines. They can be really sort of scratchy. Then I'm gonna get my chip brush. It's a two inch chip brush. Just flick off the extra little tidbits there. I'm trying to be tight with my lines, but also sort of assertive. Make sure that I carve down into the surface. And then I want to do some other symbols of things that he is obsessed with, like spoons. And then I want to do a little chicken. We have chickens and he likes to chase them around. And he loves water, so maybe just some water droplets. He loves to drink it, dump it out, talk about it. Always good to have reference images. So even if you think you know what something looks like, it's good to print out some reference images and look at them or look at them on your computer while you're working. That's good. Now I'm going to make kind of a border and I'm just going to have a line that like echoes the shapes. And I want to get some variation in line quality. Probably a thicker line that's going to border that line. Like this chopstick actually will work pretty well. Each line kind of has a personality. There can be like playful lines, spastic lines, wild lines, sad lines. And I want, I think I want this neck to look a little more incorporated, continue some of those lines on there. I'm going to get a little bit more loose and playful on the rest of this. Not that I wasn't playful before, but I'm going to continue the lines reaching over the other side. I could just repeat some fun things like the moon. I can use this dull pencil here or some other things. This could be a little drier. It's a little bit rubbery. Don't want it too dry though. I don't really want to set this down and smush the design on the other side. Probably would be alright, but I just don't want to lose any of that subtlety. And it's good to kind of work on different sections at the same time for the sake of continuity. It's like what themes can you do that are gonna unite it, what the theme could be a pattern, an image, something that repeats, that creates unity, that makes it feel kind of like a unified whole. Don't forget to sign it. I've got it pretty cleaned up. I took some time and flicked off the crumbs using my brush and some tools and now it's ready to be painted with the underglaze or ungobe, slip, whatever you have that you want to use. A dark color is good. I'm going to use this Amico Velvet underglaze, jet black. Make sure it gets into all those grooves. Sometimes you have to kind of stipple it in there. You want to put it on kind of thick and dense, but you don't want to let it pool anywhere. You just want a nice 
opaque layer. If your design is really isolated, you might be more careful and just kind of paint over the area where your design is. And then make sure get in all those little crevices, stipple it in there if you need to. Looks good. Now I'm going to let it sit out and dry. That took about an hour to dry. If you're in a hurry, you could use a blow dryer or a heat gun or something like that to speed it up. Just make sure you dry it real evenly if you do that. It's important to let it dry in the crevices. It's not totally dry in there, but it's not wet. If it's wet, you might smear it and you'll be kind of working against yourself. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have any little bits of clay around that are going to get stuck in there. So I'm going to clean off my board. Probably take some time to clean off your area, scrape away any little bits you got sitting around. I'm going to lay this rag down so I don't mess up the design as I have it lying down while I'm scraping. I could do it with the base standing up, but I think it'll be easier lying down. Make sure you've got your underglaze or your slip in all the little crevices. If you didn't, then you can go back in with a brush, touch those up, and then let them dry. But you want to make sure all those lines are filled. And now we'll get our metal rib, make sure it's nice and clean, and start scraping. Make sure there's no hairs from the brush left on there. Until Now we'll try the rounded side. Keep a brush handy to wipe off those little bits on there. Try not to stir them up too much. You don't want to breathe that dust. You could wear a mask while you work, but it shouldn't be too bad. You often need to really focus on an area to carefully remove the surface and expose those nice beautiful lines. Sometimes you gotta kinda go against the grain of the design like with these lines and you can decide how much you want to take off. Maybe you leave it a little bit looser. Some of those nice textural marks on there. Get some of that material off so I'm not rubbing it back into the image. Carefully flip this over and get rid of any of the dust that's on here, get it out of the way. Now I've scraped most of the excess underglaze off. If you wanted to, you could touch up some places, maybe you want some areas to be solid black. Maybe a lot of this area with lines, that could be solid black. And you could even add some highlights. And that's what I'm gonna do with some red. I'm gonna go through and do some of the tomatoes and the fire engine and just add some little red highlights in there. And the key when you are painting on some color on top is to make sure that it remains on top. You wanna kinda of wipe it over the surface. You don't want to get down in there. You want to wipe it across the surface. I'm using a red underglaze and I mixed it with 
a little bit of white and a little bit of orange. I wanted it to be a light color so my lines still really pop. Then I got a couple different size brushes. It's good to use a brush with a flatter tip on it. A flatter tip is going to ride the surface better and be less likely to dip into your lines and mess them up. Generally with underglaze you'd need two layers to get some nice opaque color. Otherwise you can get brush strokes and it can look kind of patchy. In this situation we already have a really textural look to it so we might be able to get away with just one layer. Nice to use a bigger brush because it rides the surface of the clay better but you need a little detail brush if you're going to get into some of those tight areas. Now I've completed the color and the Mishima inlay and I'll let it dry out, get bisque fired, and then we'll get some glaze on it. I'll leave it loosely covered for at least a week or so. I've left a little bit of remnants of the black underglaze across the surface. It gives it a nice energy. You could try and scrape it all off if you want.